I'm Peter Carroll, I'm professor and chair of urology here at UCSF. I like to think of prostate cancer as a full spectrum. So you have prevention, early diagnosis, what I call risk assessment, treatment, and survivorship. Risk assessment plays that middle ground. So for the people who get diagnosed with prostate cancer, it's not an automatic move to treatment. You identify the certain characteristics of that tumor and patient that allows you to select the most appropriate form of treatment. The Achilles heel of early detection is over-detection. You're know, detecting these low volume, low grade lesions. And if you simply move to treatment, you will offer treatment to many men who will not benefit from it. So I like to think it's early detection really attached to risk assessment. Risk assessment is our ability to take a look at this man's cancer and then say, what kind of risk does it present to that man and how can I best manage that risk? From the cancer standpoint, you look at the cancer grade, how malignant it looks under the microscope, its volume, its stage, confined to the prostate, beyond the prostate, serum PSA level, and you get a very good assessment of what kind of risk does this tumor represent to that patient. What we saw probably 10 years ago, 90% of patients with low-grade tumors were being treated Many didn't need that. Now we see that there's an increase in active surveillance, which I think has been a product of better understanding of risk assessment. I personally believe that the best time to do PSA testing is probably at age 45, because the single biggest predictor of your future risk of prostate cancer, lethal prostate cancer, is serum PSA. It trumps family history, it trumps ethnicity. So I think a single PSA at age 45 gives you a pretty good idea who's at risk over their lifetime. There's a lot of technology rushing into this area which will have, a, I think, a big impact on not only risk assessment, but actually screening. You'll, you'll see the people who have an elevated PSA may not be marched right off to a biopsy, but you'll see these tests being done to identify which men are harboring higher volume or higher grade disease. You'll biopsy them. Men who are harboring low grade disease may not even need a biopsy. Early detection will be more selective. That means men will, will see fewer biopsies done, but the biopsies will be done in men who are harboring higher risk disease, which benefits from treatment. That will move very rapidly. I think, again, for those men who are identified to have cancer, we'll have better tools to determine which ones need to be treated and be treated with what. I mean, we'll identify radiation-resistant genes. We'll identify patients who will benefit from novel treatment. I think September does many things very well. One, it raises the profile of this disease. So it gives information to patients, to families, a lot of enthusiasm. It's a very positive, focused organization. So I think you raise knowledge in the community so people understand the disease, understand what the issues are, understand more about screening, survivorship. Secondly, obviously, the money that's raised is, is applied to novel research. You need funding for novel projects, these projects which are untested but may lead to very positive future areas of funding.